conquers. We'd climb the dry stone and bear the scourge of nettles to get at them, scattered in deep shade under the chestnut. Their outer cases, green as apples, spiked like balls of medieval flails, would be cracked open, we hoped, by their falls, so we could not spear our fingers getting them. Those dark conkers, grained as mahogany, gleaming at us from their pithy sockets. And we'd stuff our pockets, take off our hats and fill them, stick some in the bulging sides of our socks. We'd be getting more critical the longer we collected, turfing out smaller ones that at first had seemed impressive, impelled by the urge to find some monstrous brown mother of all conkers though medium-sized ones had more endurance. And speaking of durability, we'd try out tricks to make them tougher, soaking them a few days in paraffin, baking them almost to cinders. Yet they were better, so some said, captured on the full when the wind first shook them. In our pockets, they'd lose their luster, but a week of that would make them harder, till it was time to spear and string them, and climb out scab-kneed beyond the tree, up onto the knoll, brazen as Normans, brandishing our weapons. And all autumn long, as leaves grew ragged and shade turned dappled, came our shouts of Obliobliō and Obliobliónka, a scuff-shoed rabble, dauntless in our battle clamour. The nettles, now dusty, were shredded by caterpillars when the last eighteeners met each other with a smack and one lay shattered. The vaunted last one would be stashed or pickled. Then we'd run off laughing and vie with one another to build the biggest guy.